I travel almost 20 hours from uh, Romania to attend to, the, to this amazing conference. So today we are going to be talking about multi-tenancy in Kubernetes. And the reason that I choose this subject is because at this moment, using the Kubernetes primitives only, we cannot run a production-ready workload in a multi-tenant architecture. First of all, why multi-tenancy? Multi-tenancy is referring to sharing resources in a single cluster with hundreds of independent user or teams. Using a multi-tenant architecture, we can benefit of resource efficiency, less operation overhead, or faster onboarding of a new team. Project ITOS, it's a multi-tenant Kubernetes-based platform put together through the collaboration between the infrastructure and product development teams in Adobe. The initial version of ITOS started in early 2016 with Apache Mesos and DCOS, and we, we reached an incredible scale of the past years. Then last year in December, we went in production with Kubernetes. ITOS Kubernetes friends are Kubernetes primitives, open source software, or software developed internally in Adobe in order to provide five main requirements of a multi-tenant platform, like self-service, access control, resource control, work isolation, and observability. Kubernetes primitives are not enough to achieve all of these requirements. For example, for self-service, we internally develop ITOS Kubernetes on border, which is a tiny application that implements Adobe requirements for tenant onboarding. Echo creates necessary resources like namespace, role binding, resource quota, limit range, and network policy in each cluster that we select from a, from a list of a cluster running worldwide in Azure, AWS, or Adobe Private Cloud. Once we are onboarding into ETHOS, we can deploy an application that has a basic isolation in the cluster. For network policies, we rely on Cilium CNI, which has interesting features like it provide, provides out-of-the-box eBPF that improves both network speed and security of the pods. It is designed to scale, which is necessary for larger multi-tenant clusters. And we can cre create layer seven policies over HTTP or gRPC protocol, which is mandatory in a microservice ecosystem. Now we want to expose our application outside of the cluster. Therefore, we need to create an ingress that supports complex multi-tenant configuration. Contour, it's an ingress controller that has Envoy under the hood with important features for multi-tenancy. It supports hot restart, so adding a new ingress object in a cluster do not impact other tenants' workloads. It provides a lot of metrics for observability and advanced load balancing that can satisfy multiple use cases. And users need to create ingress out CRDs in order to use those Envoy functionalities. In a standard Kubernetes cluster, we can validate or mutate API requests using admission controllers. But if you need something custom, the easiest way is through open policy agent. And this is a simple policy written in Rego that prevents independent users to create ingress route CRDs in the same cluster using the same FQDN. If our application runs untrusted software, then we need a, an advanced multi-tier sandboxing because the security features of the Linux kernel namespaces are not enough. This is the case for Adobe Experience Manager, which is a content management system application that can run software written by Adobe customers. In ethos, we can choose to run our application using Kata, then our pods are going to run on, on top of lighter virtual machines that provides almost the same performance as containers, but as the security advantages of a VM. Observability is important in uh, multi-tenancy because we need to know what is going on with the cost overall workload. And on the other hand, users expect out-of-the-box tools for observability. In each cluster, we are running end-to-end -end synthetic tests based on the Kubernetes upstream end-to-end -end test framework, and we expose them to the end users as a cluster capability dashboard. And this dashboard should be all-time greens green, but if it doesn't, and we need it for a presentation at KubeCon, we may use Adobe Photoshop to make it green. Thank you. 